I leave the homeowner and the electrician alone for five minutes and look what they do. Well, hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Sometimes you get left with a mess like this and it really doesn't matter how it happened. You're the one that has to clean it up. So today I'm going to teach you how to make nice walls out of Swiss cheese. The first thing you want to do is look for any loose bits like this and just kind of cut them out. that'll cause a blister down the road. Okay, so everything else here is actually ready to put tape on too. And this is a perfect job for mesh tape, is all this kind of little patchery. Okay, so in order to put mesh tape on, it's pretty simple. You just put it on there, you can kind of flatten it like that, and you pull the tape up like this to tear it off. And you'll find out right away if you're not tearing it properly, because it won't tear. That's a noisy thing you got there, filmer guy. And some people don't like to overlap their tape because it's going to build it out too much. Really doesn't matter in this case because this wall is getting built out. So I'm going to do that to everything here. Okay, you guys don't need to watch me do this to every single patch, but when I'm done, we'll get back to it. So my first coat is going to be with 20 minute mud. So I love this stuff, the Hamilton Smooth Set. It's a good product, but it's mostly a West Coast product here. Either way, you want to use a good setting type mud for your first coat over mesh tape. So I've got a little bit of water in my bucket here, a couple inches, and I'm going to make sure that I save some for my next coat. So you can see in there. Okay, that's good enough for what I need. Clean this off. And you want to get all the quick set off of here. That'll do. This is just some other mud that's still left on there. So I will be using a 12 inch trowel and a hawk. I always have my six inch knife handy. Load up. So on my first pass on these, I'm gonna make sure to be actually filling in all the little gaps and kind of flattening down the tape. So this is just really quickly to get those gaps filled in. Sort of like doing a grout float, like grouting tile. I'm just filling in all those joints. This is 20 minute mud, so I'm hustling. button. I'm not at all worried right now about what it looks like, just that the joints are getting filled. Okay, now at this stage, I'm gonna clean it off just a little to get some material. Now I want this stuff on the wall. And here's the thing, so when you're doing patches like this, you don't want to be doing each patch individually. What you're doing, like think of yourself, you're a wall maker. Like you're putting an extra eighth of an inch minimum onto this whole surface to even it all out, make it nice and smooth. You're not just hiding a bunch of little lumps. What you're doing is actually smoothing out the wall. But I don't have a lot of material, so I've got to go lightly, and I can make it up on my second coat. Doesn't really matter how you put it on the wall, it's how you take it off. Okay. Looking a little better. 
You want to make sure that you're like at least six inches past on your first coat, at least on any of your joints, preferably more like a foot. Okay, now I know how much I have in here and I can actually start floating it out a little bit better. So you want to come in here, we're going right up to the top here. Can you see there? You can't see there. So I've gone right up to there. And now this is the part where I'm gonna start just kind of flattening it all out. It's sort of like an old school plastic job. And so what the trowel is doing is it's just kind of finding the high and low spots. And there will be high and low spots. That's drywall, that's sort of the idea. Feather my edge. And now what I'm doing here is I'm taking the pressure, so I had it this way, and now I'm slightly this way to leave a decent lift off. All the way down. Again, it doesn't matter entirely what direction you're going here, just that you're not leaving big high spots. thin here because I can really see my patch there. Put a little bit more on there. Okay, we need more here. This is all the material I have, so I've got to push it as far as I can. Normally I would mix more, but I only had about half a bag. Okay, it is on the wall and it is smooth enough for a first pass. to kick off. It should be in about another five or ten minutes. Once you get all your gear on the walls, now it's time to clean. You don't want any of this stuff setting up and getting in your next mix. And your bucket. Definitely your bucket. That is adequate. So I'm actually going to use this water for my next mix to help accelerate the next mix because I'm easily going to get it onto the wall. And oh, 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 this stuff has taken its time to set. It's been a good 20 minutes and I'm waiting for it to kick off so I can quickly polish it, but I do have a corner to tape. So I've got some taping mud right here. I'm going to tape this corner in really quick. And now, while I'm waiting for this to kick off, I am going to go and mix my other batch because I know how long it's going to take. I want to get a head start. If you're just doing a small mix and it's good quick set, you can easily mix it by hand too. You don't have to use a drill. You just need your six inch knife. Do the tradesman special mask. That's more. looking pretty good because I can get it to thin out and look nicer on the wall. I don't need to worry about all the little clumps right now. The mud now is mostly not shiny. I can only see the odd little shiny spot which means I can probably start to polish some of these lift offs down. So that's just simply like this. So this is basically like the same as sanding and I'm just kind of taking those big lift offs down. 
And you want to be careful that it's not dragging. If it's dragging and pulling, then you're too early. Okay, it's generally looking all right. So this is that sort of magical state where it's kind of plasticky and not all quick sets work so nicely. This is why I love the Hamilton brand because it just flattens out real nice and sticks to the paint really nicely. We got here where the quick set shrunk into the gap. I'm going to fill it a little bit. Now I can take that mud I mixed, put another coat on here and get rid of that stuff you were just polishing because it's going to kick off your mix. Yeah, that's a good spot, right? So this coat is quite a bit thinner than the first coat in terms of how you apply it. You can see it doesn't look that nice because this was that hand mix. But as I work with it, if it's a good quick set, those clumps are going to start to work in and just be mud instead of clumps. Taking some of that material, going right up to the top. That's now starting to look a lot better. I'm going to go a little bit wider than my original one. Get the rest of this stuff out of here. Just enough. Should really learn how to hold my trowel properly like an actual plaster. Because they go like this. But I'm making a mess. I'm not skilled at that yet. So I'm going to do it the way I know how. Now I'm doing that exact same thing that I did on the last one, which is the angling of which way my trowel is. So my first pass, I'm just loading it on, and then I go like this, and then all my consecutive passes are angled that way to not get a nasty line in my work. going over it, it's just kind of leveling out any inconsistencies. You can see what I said when I said wall maker. We're not just coating these little patches individually, you're making like a whole new surface of the wall and that's how you're going to get them to all disappear and not wind up with a wall full of little molehills. I'm almost at the point where I'm going to walk away from this and wait till my final coat. Final coat's gonna be regular air drying mud, a nice finished mud. I'm gonna leave it right there. Let me take a nice close look at what that's looking like. Got a few little lines, we're gonna polish all that out right before final coat. And back to the bucket cleaning ritual again, which you've seen. Now it's time to whip up some topping mud. 
You want a nice freshly mixed batch of mud here. Get all the air out of it, get it nice and smooth before you go do that top coat. Bucket hygiene. Okay, so this next coat has kicked off, but there is something to note here. If you start trying to polish this coat where the painted surface, where the new mud is on the painted surface, sometimes come take a look right close up here. It can be a little bit not kicked off. Whereas over top of the rest of it, it's actually kicked off and ready to polish. So that's something to note. You have to make sure the stuff that's over the paint, that's the new mix, is actually kicked off before you start trying to polish it or it's gonna just drag and pull it all off. And that's a drag. So, but this is now ready to polish out the little stuff. And I'm just taking off the high spots and filling in the low spots with the material that's left on here. There's the part that needs a little work. Here's like a gouge that I was talking about. I'm getting a little bit of material, filling it in. You just kind of polish them out like that. There's some of that dragging I was talking about right there. Polishing down those little high spots, filling in the lows. Okay, this is all kicked off enough to put my third coat on. Get rid of this. Where should we get rid of this this time? <laughs> now I'm going to take my nice freshly mixed mud, get a hawk pole, and it's fairly similar. This stuff's pretty loose though, so I'm going to have to work with it carefully. Doesn't really matter in this case how you put it on. Again, just how you take it off, get a nice coat on there. This time there's no rush to actually get the entire thing coated first. We're just working on it. Okay, now I'm going to feather my edge here. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I feathered my edge and now I'm going to start with my pressure this way a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to leave like a sixteenth of an inch. So this is just a sanding coat, something to fill in all the imperfections and give you a nice smooth coat to sand. Also, I needed a bit of material to get to this side. Okay, back to here. off right there. Okay. 
awesome. Now this might take a few passes. You want to make sure that you're leaving a nice coat on here. And passing over it is what helps flatten it all out and make it uniform. Need a little more here. I can feel it. Get a low spot there too. Okay, start back here. guy. Oh, let's go right down to the bottom. Why not? Make the baseboard happy. This will be it. Okay, so that is done. You can take an up close look at it. There's nothing but just lift offs. We got one lift off here that needs to be sanded off. And you can see just lift offs, lift offs, lift offs. It's all easy sanding though. Anyways, this is it. This is your one day patch and how to get rid of all of those little patches. So some people are surprised at how much you actually have to do to get rid of all those little patches. Otherwise, like I said, you got a bunch of little molehills on the wall. All right, I hope you guys found this useful. This is how I like to get rid of all those little patches. This is how I skim coat a wall. Thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I hope you found it useful and be sure to check out other videos and stuff because I'm always putting them out. Still talking. Hit like. Yeah, all that lame. Subscribe. Yeah, lame YouTuber stuff.